today's testimony, and really the totality of Cohn's testimony, I think the chances of a unanimous conviction are like 10 to 15 percent. I think the chances of a hung jury are over 50. And before Cohn's testimony, I thought there was no way there could be an all-out acquittal. But now I think there is a slightly higher chance of an acquittal than a conviction. But I'm not betting the house on any of this. But let's talk to two people who have been following this case closely. Renato Mariotti, former assistant U.S. attorney for the Northern District of Illinois, who has said from the start he expected there would be a conviction, and John Malcolm. He served as deputy assistant AG in the DOJ's criminal division under President George W. Bush, who's currently at the Heritage Foundation, and he has been a skeptic of this case from the beginning. All right, Renato, have you changed your mind at all? Not really. I, I think it's fair to say I have also, there's been things I've been skeptical about regarding the Bragg uh, prosecution. However, uh, it's usually a safe bet to bet on the prosecution in a criminal case. Okay, I've tried a lot of cases, both as a federal prosecutor and a defense counsel. Uh, the government usually wins, and you know part of the reason why is because they don't bring cases if they don't think they're going to win. Here, uh, you not only have a, an unpopular defendant, but one who would not allow his counsel to pursue the sort of strategy that would have gotten them a victory or a hung jury here. They could have stipulated to a lot of the underlying facts here, focus on some of the I would say weaknesses in the prosecution's case, the, the difficult legal issues like whether or not, for example, Trump was aware of the false statements of business records. They didn't do that. It's this sort of scorched earth attack on Cohen, scorched earth attack on Daniels. And regarding this theft, uh, to me, that's a sideshow. I mean, we already knew Tro uh, Cohen was a fraudster. We already knew he's a liar, so he's a thief. Uh, to me, that doesn't really move the needle all that much. Um John, let, let me ask you uh, a separate question, because I know that you think, well, let me start with, you think there'll be a convict, you, you think there'll be an acquittal in this case? No. Well, I think your analysis is spot on. At this point, I think that the odds of a hung jury are high, and I certainly think the odds of an outright acquittal are higher at this point than the odds of a conviction. Uh, I mean, look, this case largely hangs on Stormy Daniels and Michael Cohen. You know, Michael Cohen has lied every time he's been under oath, and he's been under oath a lot. He's admitted that he hates Trump. He blames Trump for having been disbarred. He stole from Donald Trump. He said he's profited off of Donald Trump's legal troubles and will profit more uh, if he is convicted. Uh, he recorded a privileged conversation with Donald Trump, along with lots of conversations with reporters that he was going to disclose to a third party. And he told everybody that he thought Stormy Daniels was an extortionist. And they told lots and lots of people that Donald Trump knew but, nothing about these. So but there I is an argument, right, John, that that all of that is irrelevant to the fundamental question of did Donald Trump actually pay off the money with the intent of influencing the election, right? I mean, because well, they would say they have corroborating evidence with regard to Michael Cohn. I, I, you know, you're saying you agree with my your my analysis. I kind of agree with yours, but. You know the argument on the other side, which is you kind of don't need Michael Cohn to some degree on most of the facts. Oh, I don't think that's right. So the corroborating evidence are these invoices and the payments and the, the business entries. But that does not tell you a story about what was behind making those payments, what Donald Trump understood, what his accountants yep. understood. All of that hangs and falls yep. on Michael Cohen. And yep. while I agree... Uh, you know, that, oh, look, I was a federal prosecutor, too. The prosecutors often win these cases, and they often will have to call unsavory witnesses. The corroboration of Michael, te Michael Cohen's testimony here is, in my opinion, quite weak. Well, let me ask, you mentioned about Cohen's motives here, and, and they, they asked a question which I think backfired on the defense today. Cohen was uh, testifying about it's, if it's better for him if Trump is found not guilty. He said, actually, uh, it's better for me if he's not, this is number three, because it gives me more to talk about in the future. Um, and, you know, it's kind of an interesting point, right? The fact that if he's found not guilty, it gives Cohn more material to go off on on his various shows. Oh, if he is found guilty, he gets to talk about he's the man who convicted the former president. And if he is found not guilty, and it's based on the fact that Michael Cohen exploded on the witness stand, he can talk about it all he wants to. But I predict that not many people will listen or buy his future books. Um, Renato, again, this comes down to how important a witness is Michael Cohen, right? He is the quote-unquote star witness. He is totally 
not credible. But you're basically saying you still think that the jury's going to be able to look past that. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.